Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching us. I am Katie Z with a weekly update uh, for FIO, the Foundation for Interwallet Operability. Today is Tuesday, January 5th. I'm joined by the Managing Director, Luke Stokes. How are you, Luke? I'm doing all right. A little back pain, but other than that, I'm doing fine. <laughs> it's oh, exciting. Crypto is pumping. We're almost at like literally just about to hit 34,000 on Bitcoin, which is amazing. So it's an amazing time. It is really exciting time right now. Happy New Year. 30, 34. 30, it just happened. 34. New all-time high. Oh amazing. my God. You have a ticker running, don't you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. So listen, I'm super excited. I almost said stoked, but I like caught myself there every time. I do it all the time. It's okay. <laughs> no, I'm super excited though to be doing these weekly updates. Um, We did get some good feedback from others in the community that caught the first one. They're like, yeah, really looking forward to this. So if you're just catching this, uh, the idea is that, you know, each week you and I and or maybe others from the community are going to be just having a quick like 15, 20 minute chat, uh, giving you some high level updates of what progress is going on, what conversations are happening over at FIO in the greater landscape. Um, and want to use this as like an open invitation to the rest of the community and and hopefully new members to the community or the FIO fam, as we say, to, um, to participate more. So actually on that, because we are radically transparent and um, decentralized, one of the things, one of the tools that we use is um, Atlassian. If you're not familiar with it, it's similar to like Trello. So there's like a Confluence and a um, Jira board. Thanks for sharing it. Uh, Confluence is like the wiki as you see, and Jira is more like the Kanban board. So thanks for pulling this up. One of the things that I'd love for you to touch on is to help the community get familiar with like where the core team like this is our atlas, right? This is our compass for getting around, navigating all that's going on at FIO. And um, let's let's touch on. I'll open it up to you on um, how you want to present this to them. Yeah, thank you. Like, so I'm I'm really excited about. Uh, so Pavo, our chief of product, he's done an amazing job of organizing our community online. So we have, as we were saying, a wiki in Confluence, and Jira is kind of like. If you were ever going to put something together in a spreadsheet, we try to put that over in JIRA. And this is kind of our wiki homepage. And you can see here, this is where the community hangs out. There's also access controls. So you can kind of see, for example, um, like the marketing board is a little bit more closed down. Actually, we have to update that because I think we closed that down a little bit too. So that only the certain members could see because there's some sensitive information like in business development, for example, if you're talking about you know, a, a big marketing thing that's going to happen next week, but you got to keep it on embargo before it happens. You know, you don't want that getting leaked out too soon. So we have certain access restrictions for the, the team members that are paid by the foundation to do work, but you can, uh, most of these are available. So you can jump in to look at the product stuff. You can look at what the development team is doing. You can look at uh, different support information and the community calendar. That's another great way to get connected. You can even uh, invite the, uh, the calendar right into your Google calendar. And if you're a part of the team, you can actually just uh, add events to it as well. And of course, if you want to drill down here to meet the team, meet the community, that's where you can look at the different people that are involved, the steering committee, all kinds of great stuff. And one of the things that we were talking about was just kind of highlighting here on Peak D, which I, again, I'm a big fan of using blockchain technology if you're in the blockchain industry. So I've been part of the Steam and Hive community since 2016 myself. So I like to just personally blog here, even though we have our medium blog as well, I sometimes do more kind of techy in-depth stuff. I just like when I have a, a thought, I throw it out there and I publish it over on the blockchain. But we have this uh, post here and it goes into greater detail about initiatives, opportunities and worker proposals within our community, along with like a, a little 18 minute video that kind of walks through how this works. So if you're interested in getting more involved, like if you're like, hey, I'm looking for work in the blockchain space, you know, what are the open opportunities that FIO has that I might participate in? Or maybe you're thinking, hey, I've got a really interesting idea that I think FIO could be great for. That's where you want to create an initiative. Uh, and that's that's something I want to show next here. This is all of our initiatives. And we have a full Kanban board for this. And we have a whole process. So if you're a community member and you come in and say, hey, I just got this idea, you would start with first checking to see if it's an opportunity. If we're already kind of saying, yeah, we want to pay people to do that. If not, you create just by clicking this button here. And again, that video can walk you through it, but you create an initiative 
And it starts here as an idea. And every two weeks, the steering committee comes together and says, okay, let's evaluate where we're at. So we talk through what's in progress. We talk through what's ready for work. We talk through what's on community review. So for example, FIP 14 and FIP 5, and again, FIPs are our FIO improvement proposals. That's where we, and, if, and I'll actually, let me show one of these as an example. I'll go into detail on this one. The FIO improvement proposals are a way that we take an idea, start designing it and bring it all the way out to like a, a, a very detailed spec that we actually wanna build. So this is one of the larger FIPs that is still in draft form. And it's about privacy, how we could make FIO even more private and secure between two individuals. So your public addresses wouldn't even be mapped in plain, in plain text. So you can see this is quite an extensive document with all kinds of work that's gone into this, lots of design. And this is currently in community review, meaning it's a big deal to actually implement this like in your wallet or exchange. So we wanna make sure that the community is excited about it. We're not gonna go build this as a team uh, without full support from the community. So that's an example of an item that is in review and we'll stay in review for a little while until we get that buy-in from the community. Um, so that's again, what a FIP is, a FIO improvement proposal. Anyone can submit those in the community and we have a process for evaluating those as well. Are and there then, any for submitting them? What's that? Are there incentives for the community submitting these? For FIPS and initiatives, not currently. That's a great question though. Um, so far, there's been a lot of, like we've had too many ideas. So I don't know that we need to necessarily incentivize people to say, hey, go get this done. But that's, I think, where it comes down to, like if you create an initiative, like I'll give an example. Um, I think it might be in here. FIO pay is a really interesting idea that the community came with to say, hey, what if you could do subscriptions with FIO? And they started building this out. They've got a functional interface for it. So you can actually have a thing that says, okay, it's going to send me a FIO request every month for like, you know, 10 bucks in Bitcoin, for example. That'd be a really cool feature. There's no other platform that allows for subscriptions in crypto. And it's also a user experience that I personally would prefer to be like, do I really want this every month? I want to look at my phone and be like, yeah, I still want to pay for that. Cool. I'll pay for it. You know? And so this is an example where it's an initiative, it's in progress, and it potentially could be something that the foundation might sponsor financially, like depending on where the project is and how valuable it is for the community. So this is one that, you know, somebody's working on. There's another one in here. I forget exactly where it is. Uh, we actually have a meeting tomorrow where they're building a, a, a domain marketplace. And that's something that's really in high demand, you know, being able to trade your NFTs, you know, your field domains are really NFTs and being able to sell and buy and sell those with escrow is, uh, is really interesting. And that's another one that's in here uh, somewhere that's kind of started by the community. But beyond that, we have uh, a process where, again, it goes from idea to then we kind of prioritize here in the roadmap, like verified FIO addresses. So you could have like one address that you absolutely know is a human being. Um, you could have integrations with Keybase, which would be kind of interesting, push notifications in your wallet, private key recovery. Uh, we have ideas for a developer advocate who could be doing hackathons. And then, I mean, just so many different interesting ideas that we have here. And we go through as a steering committee and kind of prioritize those and then bring them into definition. And so, uh, Katie, you're on that steering committee. What, what's been your kind of experience so far with that process? I think you've, you've been to like a couple of them already. For the steering committee process, um, you know, I really value it because what, um, and I take it really seriously too. Um, so what's really cool about that is being the eyes and the ears for the community and taking in all of that feedback uh, of, you know, how people are discussing these things, what, what level of interest is there why is the interest what it is or what it isn't and um, you know advocating for for the protocol um, on the community's behalf as well as part of this um, you know process to kind of make it go really smoothly get these get progress done on these initiatives as you pointed out there's no shortage of ideas right and so we can only do so much at any given time or any given month or week or whatever it is. So being able to focus that in so that we can be effective with our resources for the community's behalf is, um, you know, it's a, it's a cool process that we're working on. I do want to add too, um, with what you're showing. So if you're catching this video um, later and you want to know about these links, every link that we show on the video, uh, I'll make sure that there's a link to it directly in the description box, but also just for a shorthand 
Like if you're just looking for like just a quick message to somebody, theoprotocol.io uh, slash chat, that'll take you to the Discord. Everybody's hanging out in the Discord um, and you can get really quick responses from the team, the broader community, and um, you know, we can help you kind of navigate this if you're interested in you know, jumping in there. If you have a, an account, which anybody can set up an account, um, their own account for JIRA and Confluence, what you're showing them right now, and then they can go in there and you can make it anonymous. You know, you don't have to have your name on there, but um, you can go in there on any of these tabs that interest you and put your feedback in there, you know, add your voice to the conversation. And so, yeah, thanks so much for showing some of this stuff because what I want to do is help get the community more familiar with what we're familiar with day in and day out working on FIO. And so would like to, you know, keep this relevant top of mind as we're doing these weekly updates too. I, I, I'm so glad you mentioned like have your voice heard because we have this thumbs up here. So there is actually a process to even like as a community member, even not being on the steering committee, you know, you can actually go ahead and, and, and vote them up. Um, there is a, a special page here for the work of proposals and this kind of goes into detail, but there is a page, I, I won't go digging it up at the moment, but there is a page where you can actually, uh, actually that, this might be it right here, where you can actually kind of see them in a list format as well. And this kind of talks about how to vote, you know, and, and so you can kind of see them in a little more broken down, like this is what we're working on right now in the roadmap. This is, uh, you know, how you vote on what's in progress. So it's the same data that we were looking at before. And this, you know, what we've recently completed, you can look at all that as well. It's just kind of a cool way to, to do it. So one of the things that we talked about, we, we want to try to go quick on these and make them about 15 minutes, these little update videos, is doing just a quick kind of deep dive in about four different things we're excited about right now. So I was going to go ahead and jump into some of those. The, one of the things we started working on as a team is the ability to wrap the FIO token and more importantly, the FIO domain, the NFT domain, in the Ethereum ecosystem. Because OpenSea and other different places where NFTs are traded and sold, uh, that we want to be able to make the value of FIO, which is making your crypto easier to use, making that available to the larger cryptocurrency community. And so if they're not like already on FIO, it makes a lot of sense to be like, okay, I'm over on OpenSea. And then I hear about it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I want my domain. And I get to buy my domain, transfer it back to the FIO protocol core network, and then I can start using it. Uh, as well as the token itself. Uh, we, have a, we have a lot of great feedback from token investors who are essentially saying, you know, if it's not on Uniswap and I can't get it within two clicks, I'm not interested, right? And I, I, I hear that more and more, which is really exciting. I mean, someone who's been playing with like BitShares since 2016, 2017, super huge fan of DeFi. And, and you know, before that was even a term on these idea of decentralized exchanges. I just, I love that the community is like, I think really the bank or protocol and the different like liquidity algorithms that we came up with was the key. That was what we needed. Now that we had that, people were like, oh yeah, I don't want to bother with you know KYC and central exchanges and all this stuff. So so we're really aware of that and the importance of that. And that's why we're putting a lot of effort. We've looked at a lot of different solutions. But as we've as we've looked at the industry, we realize also that there isn't a great way to do this. I know Cosmos and, and Thorchain and like there's so many examples of projects that are like, no, this is what we're going to be all about. Um, they're not live yet. There are a lot of them are in alpha. They're not mainnet ready. And so, and, and there's a lot of great like P networks. There's a lot of great peg tokens that the tokens exist on multiple chains. You can peg in, peg out. Pegnet, I know is a project you were involved in as well. So a lot of interesting ways to do this. Some of them where they take the actual token and peg it. Some of them are pegged to the price of the token as a derivative. So there's different ways this can be done. But ultimately a lot of them, unfortunately, especially the ones where you peg in an actual, for example, Bitcoin are, are centralized. There's, there's oracles that you have to trust. And as the more we looked into this, the more we, we realized like, we're gonna have to build our own approach where the oracles aren't so centralized. And also the oracles have to be accountable in some way by the token holders. So being a delegated proof of stake chain, we are kind of already have these block producers that are securing the entire network. And we have a subset of those that are interested in being oracles for this approach. And they can be basically voted in or removed in such a way where the token holders actually have a say. Meaning if they're an active block producer, then if they're a trusted member of the network securing the chain, then they can be brought in as an Oracle to also secure those same assets on other chains like Ethereum. So I'm very, very excited about this. It's gonna be a major effort. I mean, there are whole companies that are just dedicated to this type of approach. And so we know it's a lot to, uh, to try to accomplish, but at the same time, 
again, we're not willing to sacrifice security and, and, and have a situation where there's like millions of dollars pegged in and someone has the private key and they can just walk away with it. That would be a terrible situation. And those things unfortunately have happened. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, the honeypot's sweet. When, um, let's, from a practicality standpoint and the average person in crypto, let, let's talk about what this really means. So right now your FIO address is uh, composed of, you've got your username at symbol domain. So for example, I could be Satoshi at Nakamoto, right? And that domain is an NFT that I own. And by wrapping this, then I could take that domain, um, list it into OpenSea, which is a, a marketplace for the NFTs and, you know, name my price or whatever I think it's worth and, um, you know, be able to sell that and then transfer that domain to somebody else who wants to use it. Now you could think about different businesses, um, you know, on the high end, like Nike or something or whatever the case might be where, you know, they're going to want their own type of domain where, you know, if you are a, uh, if you are back in the dot-com days or you speculate on different um, domains and stuff, like this is your thing, right? This is uh, kind of what we're talking about there about that. But I love that the team is super sensitive about security, privacy, uh, decentralized, and just really putting the user first at everything that we do it's it's yeah it's really important like we don't want to sacrifice we want a great user experience but we can't so we don't want to sacrifice the user experience but we also don't want to sacrifice the security of decentralized governance meaning if, if there's a single point of failure it's not a DAC a DAC is a group of people with a shared goal it's distributed decentralized and it's autonomous meaning you're always going to get the same output and it's a consortium or a community that's coming together to accomplish that shared goal so I wanted to spend a little more time on this one just because it's really interesting right now. And again, as I was, and I tweeted about it earlier today um, at Luke Stokes, you could see like the, there aren't that many solutions out there today doing what's called the IBC, inner blockchain communication. And there are a lot of projects that are working on it, but it just hasn't been done yet. And that's why we kind of were like, well, we're, I guess we're gonna have to do it ourselves for now. But uh, if you're interested in this type of stuff, inner blockchain communication, the challenge of oracles being properly decentralized, uh, definitely reach out to us and let's talk about it more because we've got a pretty good idea of how we're going to do it. We're always open to feedback. We're, we're in the actual technical designs phase, building out spikes, testing things out, and uh, we're moving forward. Shout out to Michael Yates and the Aliens World and EOS DAC team. We're uh, relying heavily on some code that they started and made open source, which is great. Um, but yeah, so I just want to spend a little more time on this. I got a few more here we'll run through quicker. Uh, one of them is staking. A lot of people really get excited about staking. Staking is important to secure the network as well. Meaning people say, hey, I believe in this project. I want to stick, I want to stick with it for long term. I'm willing to not you know, speculate with my tokens, constantly trading them, selling them. But I'm actually going to put them in some type of system that rewards me for not moving them so that when I vote for block producers to secure the network, uh, I, I know that my vote can increase in weight and that security, the more and more people voting with their tokens, the more and more secure the chain is because it would take more money to come in and try to fraudulently like move in your fake, you know, civil attack nodes, which I have been a participant of that experience where in the Steam community where some exchanges and some not so reputable uh, activities took place and that gave birth to the Hive community. So I, I've, I've actually seen where millions and millions of dollars were used to do exactly that type of stuff. And, uh, and so I, I, I very, want to be very careful how we design the governance in FIO to continue to improve it. So staking is part of that. And so whenever we talk through an initiative or a project that we're thinking about, we have this great process where you kind of say, well, who's the customer? What problem are we solving for the customer? You know, why is it important to them that it gets solved? And then how are we going to track whether or not we're successful? So we analyzed a bunch of different staking models. And this is kind of our high level functionality. We've got technical details. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see that there's been a lot of conversation, 15 comments, like we're, we're actively improving. I think this revision might even be six or seven. We've had a number of revisions to this. We're constantly adjusting it and improving it. And, and the nice thing about this one in particular is that a lot of the changes came from the community and from user experiences, basically saying what you're designing is interesting, but it won't be a great user experience. So let's change it. Let's make it better. And that, that I'm just, I'm really, really happy about. 
And then the, another one related to user experience, uh, and, and I want to be real clear, like when we talk about the wrapping, that one's moving forward. Our team's working on that right now. We're fairly confident that's going to be accomplished. We don't have a timeline for when, but it is the thing we're working on right now. Uh, staking will be probably be right after that. Also very uh, important to our ecosystem, something we're pretty confident we're going to implement. These next two I'm going to show are just like, you're getting a sneak peek, you know, watching these videos, you're getting the insider look. These are ones that we're like just throwing around as ideas. You know, we haven't even done a full technical specification document for them. We haven't gone deep enough to do what we're actually with SimpleSem we're going to start doing, which is kind of more reaching out to our partners, our potential partners. People say, hey, is this interesting to you? Would you want to integrate it? So some of these ideas I'm going to show, and it says here at the top, these are, these are drafts, these are ideas. So don't get too excited about them, but that's why we're showing them to you because we want your feedback. You know, if there's something here that you've got a strong opinion on, we'd love to hear it. Are you I saw you go off mute. I was curious if you wanted to add any uh, input on that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm uh, I'm excited. Yesterday we had a call, and um, you know I've been nudging this one since you you know first put this draft together and presented the high level view of it. And, um, and yesterday I'm like like really advocating like yo this is. <laughs> That was awesome. I was like, yeah, I got a champion internally. So let, let me just quickly explain uh, what SimpleSend is. SimpleSend is an idea because we are the foundation for inter-wallet operability. We're all about making wallets easier to use together. And part of that process, you know, there's a lot of wallet naming solutions in the market right now. You know, you've got unstoppable domains, you've got ENS, you've got uh, PayString, you've got uh, you know, Crux Pay, you've got you know, uh, Star Star Name or Star Send. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them, and when you're an integration partner, you, you have a wallet or an exchange, you have to make a decision, you know, where am I going to spend my time and effort? Uh, where, what am I going to have my dev team work on? And so this idea is what if we had a single endpoint, an API that you could call within your wallet or exchange, where you get all of them, meaning it doesn't matter if I'm LukeStokes.eth, if I'm you know, crypto, if I'm Luke at Stokes, you know, if I'm Luke Dollarstein Stokes.com, like it wouldn't matter which one you're using, you would just get back the address you need so you can send. So from a customer experience perspective, it's just simple send. It doesn't matter which one I use, which wallet naming solution I use, it just works. And, and the reason we think this is interesting because we think we're positioned as a DAC that it, it, we're not like specific to one token community. We work with every single token on the market. The way FIO works, it works with everything. We're integrated into over a dozen products and services already, and we're just getting started. We're less than a year old. So I think we're uniquely positioned to promote an idea like this. And I'm pretty excited about it. Meaning if you're a, you know, a product or service that's looking to make the user experience better, and if we, if we were to design something like this and you were to have one thing to integrate, then you don't have to kind of pick which one you think might win or get the most adoption. You just get all of them. And then additionally, as we continue to improve our offering with FIO is you can be aware of, you know, which ones have different features. So for example, we have the ability to do a FIO request, a payment request. We have the ability to add memo data to every single transaction. So as additional features become available in the future, we'd like to even expand SimpleSend to say, okay, this is the base, but then you can go even further if you want to do a little bit more integration. So very excited about the potential here. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a grand endeavor but it's one that we're interested in. So we're gonna explore and hopefully we'll be hearing more about that in the future. And then here's one that's like really, really beta draft. Like I haven't even finished pitching this to the team internally yet, um, but it's just the idea that the mission and vision right now for FIO is make crypto products easy so everyone can use them. And right now, sometimes that's not easy to do even with FIO because the underlying token is hard to use. You've got high gas fees on Ethereum, you've got long delays in, in the Bitcoin mempool sometimes. You've got all these different things that make it difficult. And it's something that we can't change because the inherent token itself is, is that way. And so this related to our kind of inner blockchain communication conversation we we're having earlier and pegging in and pegging out of different networks. I'm really interested in potentially exploring, especially with stable coins, the ability to peg in and out on the FIO network directly. So you could take, you know, if you get $100 in USDT, and you need to move it around and pay 10 people 10 bucks, you know, you could peg that into FIO, pay the Ethereum gas fee one time, and then you could move it on FIO very cheaply, very quickly, 500 milliseconds. And then they could even leave it in FIO if they want to and continue using it quickly. 
And then at any moment they could peg back out and get the original Ethereum ERC-20. Just one example of, of where this could help solve the usability problem from the entire stack, not just like, okay, the user experience is great because of FIO, but the underlying token's hard to use, that kind of a thing. I mean, well, let's let's really talk about it, right? I mean, because you and I, I know for sure, are into crypto, not because, you know, we're these speculative token traders, ICO, like superheroes or anything like that. It's about, you know, radically transforming, you know, evolving past these archaic systems that just aren't just, right? And so, you know, part of this on FIO, more of the front end, like, yes, we know that human readable addresses that is coming, period. Whether, you know, PayPal, Unstoppable, FIO, ENS, whatever, it's coming. Um, but doing it in a way that puts the users first. So that's one thing. Because if we have to juggle public keys, like I can tell you for somebody who is experienced in doing this stuff, you know, I had a moment yesterday, I was like, hold on, I don't want to, I, I need to send some uh, USDT from one place to another. And I had this moment of like anxiety. It was like, like you hope it goes through. I didn't send a test send, which, you know, you know, judge me if you will. I didn't send a test send because the, the fee for Ethereum was over 40 bucks. And I'm like, okay. So I've got two issues, right? It, these two issues that we're talking about in that one situation, right? If I had a, where I was sending the USDT to was able to, that was FIO enabled, I would have been able to know before without any errors that that was going to go to the correct destination i wouldn't have had that like hold your breath like cross your fingers like say a little prayer rub your lucky rock it's going to go through <laughs> so uh, on that side you've got the fees too now let's look at like the broader picture you know we're we're american we're just born and raised here we have this like very myopic view of the world in the United States. And, um, but we know better when we're conscious in that. We know that three to 4 billion people around the world are completely unbanked, entirely cut off from finance, right? And so if, if the whole Satoshi Nakamoto dream that we're, we've signed up for is to help these people um, be included into the financial ecosystem globally, fees can't be $40. That's, that cannot, that's not going to work, right? <laughs> so those two issues are really one really big issue that FIA is uniquely positioned to address because of its own blockchain and, and because of the nature of uh, with the naming solution. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I've been in this space for eight years now, actually, January 2013 is when I first got involved. And I am here because of that dream of self-sovereign value that is decentralized and, and helps the unbanked. And so that's one of the driving forces for me personally on this type of idea. I've talked to different groups that are working in Africa and other countries where they're just, they're, they're literally trying to save dollars a day, you know? And so they can't move around in the current, you know, Ethereum, Bitcoin, you can't move a dollar or two. Bitcoin Cash is interesting. You can do some stuff there, but it's not accepted everywhere. It's not as like, it, it, there's just a lot of challenges. Dash is really good as well, but being able to be in the main two, Bitcoin or Ethereum, has a lot of value for people. You know, especially in countries where you know those are maybe the only exchange opportunities they have. So thinking about how we could potentially peg those tokens in and out is uh, is super interesting. So, and not to take up too much time, let's let's jump to the last few things we have here, and then uh, and then we'll get you know more to talk about next week. I'm sure. Uh, I'm super excited to see this uh, went live just uh, here on January 1st. We had a, a CoinDesk or Cointelegraph article that came out, crypto transactions must be easier. And it talks through the problems that we were just kind of describing, how difficult it is to use crypto. And so this is a, a great write-up, very happy to see this out there. Uh, thank you, Cointelegraph, for putting this out there. Uh, very cool to see. So definitely check that out. Um, anything what? more you want to say on that? or? No, I mean, I just want to give some people a little bit of you know, my own insight, you know, I've in this industry, I started out for a couple of years having a PR firm. And so that's following me. And I have a number of different relationships, not with this one in particular, um, where journalists will regularly just reach out and ask me, you know, what's going on to get like a pulse on different things and to hear some of my insights. And one of the things that's been consistent and I'm so happy for is that there's um, this shift 
that's now happening in the maturation process of cryptocurrency, that the focus is going to usability now and user experience. And that's been um, really refreshing to see that there's more attention and focus on that. Um, because actually this kind of segue is if you actually want to go into the, um, the OCC, what came out with that, so some of the conversation that we've had, so this was news that came out yesterday, right? So banks can, in the United States, can now, um, you know, use the blockchain and stable coins as fully regulated. Um, this is really cool. Uh, very excited to see this. It's, I think it's a major move um, in, you know, adoption. However, um, listen, you know, banks, historically have exploited people, right? And um, that's what they do. But part of what we've just talked about and why both of us are here in this industry is to help people kind of be their own bank, be self-sovereign. And so there are very clear technical ways that are better than others to help them onto that path of self-sovereignty. And so as an industry, cryptocurrency, this is something that we were talking about on a different call earlier. Um, and I'd like for you to speak from your from yourself is that we as an industry have a job to do right now like the pressures on now that we have to improve our user experience it's very easy to do a, a centralized user experience solution it's not so easy to do it in a decentralized self-sovereign fashion so Absolutely. Yeah. So this is amazing news. This is super bullish news. It's really exciting. It clarifies a lot of regulatory, you know, uh, uncertainty. I think it's fantastic. I'm I'm very very excited about this. I share the excitement that many of my friends have shared over the last you know day or two as this has been talked about more. Very very cool. You know, this this makes it super clear. Crypto is not for the bad guys. Banks are using crypto. Crypto is fine. Um, what concerns me, and this is kind of what we were chatting about earlier, is that. I don't think we're ready yet as an industry to provide the user experience that people expect. And this is why FIO is so passionate. I'm so passionate about it. This is why I'm working on it so much. And what I mean by that is, you know, people use PayPal, they use Venmo, they use their credit card, they use their banking app, and it's just super simple and it's centralized and it just works. They don't realize that it takes three days to settle their credit card, you know, between those two banks. And sometimes there's drama with that, you know, they just swipe and it works. Right. And when it, it if our industry is not ready and the mainstream comes in and says, okay, everybody start using crypto and it's a terrible experience and they start paying, you know, 20, $30 fees for, you know, ERC 20 contracts and things like that. They're going to be like, this is terrible. What is this? What a joke. Right. And then right on the heels of that. And this is just what I feel is most likely going to happen. You're going to get central bank digital currencies. You're going to get this centralized, Totally, you know, again, mint out of nothing, the worst uh, altcoin you could imagine. <laughs> They're going to be able to just create money out of nothing again and say, hey, here's an even better experience, instant banking. And you're going to be like, oh, okay, cool. It's still digital. I still get to have it in my wallet, on my phone. I don't have to pay these high credit card fees. Like, okay, cool. Let's just use that instead. And I think that if we're not careful as an industry, people are going to get introduced to a poor experience and then transition to CBDC, central bank digital currencies. And so what I'm hoping for is the opposite. I'm hoping that they're going to start with like centralized solutions, kind of like PayPal is like, hey, you can buy Bitcoin, but you can't really own it, right? And that'll be similar to like the AOL moment of the internet. It's like you start centralized and then eventually it's like, oh, you can actually go explore the internet all by yourself. You don't need to be within the wall gardens of AOL. And so I think we have an opportunity and hopefully more wallets and exchanges integrating with FIO to give them that username experience that they're used to especially in India, for example, they already have this deployed all over. Uh, they've got their own kind of human readable name situation with their banking. And so I think FIO is well positioned to do that. And then potentially, you know, wrapping tokens, for example, to give a better experience on the token itself. And if USDT or USDC, if this is what banks start using, if the fees are too high, if the experience, you know, I had a transaction that I sent yesterday that got dropped and it only got picked back up in the mempool today. So I was, I was going to have to resend it. And, and, and I had another one where uh, the, the actual gas fees uh, this happened last month, paying our team, the gas fees uh, it, it ran out. So the contract failed. I still got charged the gas, but the, the, it didn't go through. So I had to redo it. You know, like these are experiences that happen in a decentralized self-sovereign network that we are, you know, we've got second layer solutions. We got a lot of cool things we're working on to improve it. Lightning network, loop ring for Ethereum, a lot of cool things coming out, but we're not quite there yet. So 
I'm excited about this news, but it just reminds me, we've got a lot of work to do as an industry and now's the time to do it. Couldn't have said it better myself, but this is why I'm so excited about Simple Send too, because it, there needs to be a way that, you know, exchanges, wallets can integrate one simple solution, not to be redundant there, one simple solution to be kind of a, a catch-all for any, any protocol that is making it easier for people to, and, and, you know, more assuredly send their crypto and have a better experience from it. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. All right. So we're, we're probably running low on our time here. We've got so much to talk about. Do you want to highlight this as well? This is an article that came out towards the end of last year. Uh, yeah. Right at the end of the year here, right before Christmas, we've got a lot of cool things coming. These are integrations that are not live yet today, but are being worked on. Some of them will be launched very, very soon. So that includes Changely, the Whitebit Exchange, Trusty Wallet, and the Frontier Wallet. So I wanted to highlight this as well. People are always asking like, what's going on? What's on the roadmap? I want some insider information. So we're trying to be really transparent and thankfully our, our partners here were, were comfortable announcing their integration plans and their roadmap plans for getting FIO uh, part of their product and service. So I definitely want to highlight that as well. I think we've covered everything. Any other thoughts, Katie? Yeah. No, oh my God. If you're watching this and uh, you're not like, whoa, like a rush to the head, like, yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, I hope that that's, that's what, what you've experienced. But again, fioprotocol.io slash chat, that'll bring you to the Discord. That is the easiest way to just send a quick message like, hey, I heard about this or that. Where can I find more information? Connect with us directly. Um, you know, let your voice be heard. We want to hear it. So um i think we should wrap up for this week to be continued and thank uh, you so much katie i really appreciate you scheduling these and, and getting them on the calendar and I, again I, I appreciate everyone your time watching we'd love to hear from you love to hear any ideas you have for how you can use the field protocol i really think there's going to be stuff that we haven't even imagined yet I and mean, we, we've thought of some cool stuff like key recovery and you know multi-signature routing and all these like you can again go to the initiatives board and check them out but i'm sure there's ideas we've not even dreamed of that FIO, the FIO protocol is gonna make possible. So come bring us your ideas and let's talk about them. Put your FIO address in the comments below and maybe someone will mysteriously send you a little FIO love. Um, if you've watched this far, we wanna say thank you and appreciate your time and attention. We don't take it for granted. So thank you. And until next week, we out. <laughs> Bye.